Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode from Journal de Sylvie. Today I would like to uh, share with you uh, the value of marginal notes. So it's one of my favorite, favorite methods uh, while writing in my commonplace book and it's a great learning material tool. So let's get started with the definition of a margin. A margin is basically the area between the main content of a page and the page edges. Uh, it does help you to define where a line of text begins and ends. So um, a brief walkthrough, uh, the historical use of a margin in ancient times, um, really inspired me with its functionality since uh, it was always used to, uh, as a method of organizing the written word. So it goes all the way back to ancient Egypt, of course, when they used to write on papyrus scrolls that can reach up to 30 meters, and they use those blank edges as a separator between sections. So whenever they open the scroll and see this blank space, they know where to stop. And of course, uh, later on with the invention of the codex book, which is, it looks like a book, but not made of papers because it wasn't invented yet, uh, this um, purpose is not needed anymore. So this extra space was becoming more and more useful to incorporate commentaries next to the original text, which is the topic of today's video. And I will show you in a minute how I use it into my commonplace book. But before leaving the historical use, other functions of margins was also leaving a blank space uh, to protect the text by giving the readers somewhere to put their thumbs while holding the book or the document. Blank spaces also served a role in reading and comprehending the text. Some scholars debated that without this empty space or this edge to offset the main text, people will take twice as much to read and understand the text. And also finally, you can probably agree that margin serves as an aesthetic function because it frames the uh, text uh, inside, whether it's a blank or a decorated border. Uh, even in the digital world, I mean, we know that Microsoft Word document, they have their own standard dimensions to identify margins around the document. So now let's get to what do I add into my marginal notes? So uh, this is one of my commonplace books and it basically includes general knowledge and I heavily depend on um, adding notes into my margins. The marginal notes also go for the name of marginalia. A marginalia is basically any written text or visual illustrations added to the margins. Uh, it derives from the Latin word margo, which means borders or edges. It was a very uh, common term in the medieval and the Renaissance period. So let's get started with the interesting part. What do I add into the marginal uh, notes? So I have 10 items that I typically um, am keen to add into my notes, in my, into my margins, and they do help me uh, in processing the information I'm documenting. The first one is uh, an annotation. Uh, it goes also with the name of scholia. So basically, it's a marginal note or a brief explanation. It can be a grammatical note as well, a critique, any extra information associated with a particular point in the document. So there is one item of a brief explanatory note you want to add into the margins. Number two is to add uh, subheads or keywords. So adding subheads or keywords um, is to direct the readers or yourself when you come back to review the, the document to the paragraph topic. And this is very much a key uh, function because those keywords will go probably to your table of content or your indexing system and it will help you to retrieve the data in a more efficient way. Number three is um, to add in the margins material reference. So basically you can add um, page number, chapter number, book name, a reference to another document, another commonplace book or an article. And this is actually a key item in my margins. I probably don't have any page without references because this is what helps me to connect all different source of knowledge that I am using when I am summarizing a topic or writing about it. Number four, you can add a gloss. It's basically a brief notation 
on the meaning of the word. So definitely when you are studying, along with your processing the information, you improve your linguistic skills, you learn new synonyms or definitions for maybe difficult words, the meaning for those words perfectly land in the margin. Number five is adding a summary. So basically a summary, as you can see here, is um, an outline of the main points presented into the text. A summary is a great tool for later to help you review the material before even getting into the in-depth details in the paragraph itself. Number six is adding visual illustrations, typically by small sketches that will um, highlight key information about the document. If you are not into sketching, you can use stickers to communicate the same message. This is very typical in medieval manuscripts because the decoration around the text will be, um, in many cases, um, communicating hidden interpretations or just highlighting the point. Those visual aids are great in processing the learning material. Number seven is adding a notabilia. So basically, a notabilia is a brief um, naming of important topic, things that are worth of notice. So obviously, if there is a key word or something very important, you want to take it out of the body of the text and highlight it into the margins. And that's different from just a simple annotation or an explanation. This is about an important keyword. And maybe a um, journaling community, I know very well the um, manicule, which is the small hand points to particular passages in the text. Uh, that hand, sometimes they have it in rubber stamps or maybe they sketch it. And it's very common from... Um, long in history that this index finger extending in a pointing uh, gesture just to draw the attention of the reader that this passage is important or there is an important clue um, in that passage. And finally, um, you can add corrections. So remember, uh, it's very typical that you will need to correct information by drawing a line and putting the correct term or the correct spelling in the margin. Definitely, we all do mistakes. Uh, seeking perfection will be the biggest obstacle in your learning process. Uh, number nine, you can add questions. So when you add questions, basically it can be a question that came to your mind because of the topic you are studying. So you want to ask a question for further investigation or maybe um, you're trying to communicate other aspects of the topic by raising a question. And finally, uh, in your margins, you can also add ideas that came to you while you're studying, basically inspired from the text. So you don't want to go on with your study and risk having this uh, idea uh, fade away. So go ahead and add words to remind you with this idea that came to you. So finally, I would like to say that for me, marginal notes prove to be as important as the main text, if not more in many cases. Mm -hmm. I read that Catherine C. Marshall, she was doing uh, a research about annotation text. She realized that students in universities are constantly seeking used books because they were after the annotated copies. And that only means that they knew that they will find hints and clues in those margins. Marginal notes, for some reason, I don't know if you will agree with me, they will be hard to miss. They always somehow trigger the curiosity. And they also help you to, if it's your first time approaching this book or the, this document, they will help you to preview because they will give you hints about the text itself. And if it's your second time, it will definitely help you to review the document because you will find in the margins summaries, keywords, um, hints to important notes, all the 10 elements and disciplines we applied. So in all cases, it's definitely uh, considered an important learning aid that will assist you in learning the subject matter and more important, process it in a more efficient uh, way. I hope you found some useful tips uh, from my commonplace book and um, I am so eager to hear your comments and ideas. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Happy learning!